Testing, testing. Say hi, Jenny. A testing, a testing, a one, two, three. A testing, a testing, you and me. Hey, guys. If you haven't heard already, we are getting a brand new bow, which we are super excited about. It is a Seawin, and today we're going to talk about some of the options, specifically the engine options. Hi, my name is Billy. I'm Sierra, and this is our dog, Jetty. We usually live and travel on a boat, a few different boats, in fact. But now we are driving across the country as our new boat is being built. Join us on this all-new Tarantula adventure as we drive, bike, hike, paddle, and sail across the good old USA. Don't forget to subscribe. Basically, for the past year, we've been contemplating what options we want to have on this boat and just trying to justify them and, like you said, weighing the pros and cons. And it's kind of getting down to the wire. It's time to make some decisions. <laughs> it's time to finalize our decisions. So, today we're going to be talking about engines and stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next five videos of some of the other options that we've chose on our Sea Wind and why. Just to give you guys a quick little update on the boat. Oh. We just got another call. We got another delay. Vietnam is in a complete lockdown right now. It's COVID. There's nothing we can do about it. We just got to be patient. So right now our guesstimate is delivery was... in March. There's a global pandemic. There's absolutely nothing we can do about it. So we're just going to enjoy what we're doing right now. So if you haven't seen any of our truck camper videos, go watch some of those. We're having fun. We are keeping our mind off of the new boat in the meantime. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, that's where we are right now. We're in the Terratula rig. We're driving across the country, so yeah, make sure you subscribe. Even if you don't like the truck camper stuff, we'll be touching base on the new boat or every other week just to kind of give you guys an update. So if anything, just stay tuned for that. So as we mentioned, we're going to be going over the options, and this video is going to be all about probably one of the most important options that we have, and that is the options to keep the engines the same or upgrade. The Sea Wind 1160 comes standard with Honda outboard engines, 20 horsepower. We have the option to upgrade to 25 horsepower Yamaha high thrust engines or 29 horsepower Yanmar diesels, the 3YM30s. This has been a really fun debate. We've been on the fence for a while. Like each option has its own pros, pros and cons. cons and like it really put us on the fence these options all apply to any sailing catamaran that has the choice of inboard diesels versus outboards like a lot of the same things apply so even if you're not looking at sea wind 1160 light uh, maybe you're looking at another one that has these options i think it's all very relevant information to that the sea wind 1160 light comes standard with twin hondas 20 horsepower with 20 inch shaft and a five inch extension and it's mounted on a bracket under the bridge deck so the first upgrade you can do is to a 25 horsepower Yamaha high thrust outboard. It still has a 20 inch shaft with a five inch ex extension and it's also mounted to the same sort of cowling bracket that's mounted on the bridge deck of the catamaran. Also it comes through like, it's hard to explain, It's there's an opening through the bridge deck and if you're in the cockpit of the catamaran, there's like a cover that you open the cover and that's where the engine is mounted. Lastly, the biggest upgrade you can do is to upgrade to diesels and those are Yanmar's 29 horsepowers. It's the 3YM30s and they come with sail drives. So the real debate here is outboards versus inboards because honestly, almost everyone who goes with outboards goes with the Yamaha high thrust outboards. The first category is cost, and we're not going to get into exact costs here because the prices of these options and upgrades tends to fluctuate from the manufacturers and the distributors. So we just don't want to give you an exact price. And then if you go and buy Sea Wind, then this option is a different price to you. So we're not going to go there. But what I can say is that if you upgrade to the Yamaha 25 horsepower high thrust engines, that's about 1% of the base price of the boat. If you upgrade to the 29 horsepower Yamars at 3YM30s, that's about 6 to 7% of the base price of the boat. So give you a rough idea there. The Hondas and the Yamahas obviously run on gasoline and the Yanmars run on diesel. The total capacity of fuel for the gas engines are 71.3 gallons and they are located in front of the mask in built-in lockers and they are vented overboard. And they're isolated. They're, they're sealed. They're vented overboard. There's no way those gasoline fumes can get inside the boat. That's why they're in that location. The capacity of the diesel tank is about 95 gallons and that's located in the bilges of each hull. Um, kind of in the center of the hole, relatively fore and aft speaking. Besides the obvious difference of fuel capacity, there are some other things you got to think about. 
So one of the biggest things that people say about like gasoline versus diesel on board is some people just don't like to store a lot of gasoline on board. So they might have a problem with having, you know, 73 gallons of gas as their main fuel source. But in reality, these boats are being built to ABYC standards and Sea Wind is known for their quality. You we're probably not going to have a problem if we chose gas outboards, especially when they're isolated and, and vented overboard properly. Okay, so a big pro for gasoline engines is the potential to have only one kind of fuel source on the boat, and that could double as a fuel for the catamaran, but as well as the dinghy, and then you can use the same like jerry, jerry jugs? Jerry jugs? For both the dinghy and the cat. Yeah, so then you have extra capacity for either. We could also choose the same exact outboard engine for our dinghy as well. So now we have three of the same outboards, so we can have the spares and the filters and all that stuff just be universal for those three engines. And I think that's honestly my very favorite pro for the gasoline engines because like if something goes wrong on the cat, you have your dinghy engine as, or the extra cat engine as a spare. And another thing to consider is would you prefer to have the storage space where the gasoline fuel tanks are in those forward lockers and under the helm seats where the actual engines are or would you prefer to have the extra storage in the bilge area and behind the head in the port side and under the bed in the starboard side? Horsepower is horsepower at a given RPM. So you have the 20, the 25, or the 29. And the other things that can fluctuate are the torque and the consumption. The 25 horsepower Yamaha high thrust upgrade has 60% more thrust in reverse than the Honda does and 70% more thrust in reverse than the Honda does. And that's partly due to the exhaust being diverted out the engine leg rather than behind the prop in reverse. So if that exhaust is being expelled behind the prop like it normally is on, on most outboards, then that kind of counters your reverse direction. But since it's being diverted out the leg, you have more thrust in reverse. Diesel inboards are known for their torque and they're going to have considerably more torque than the outboard options. One of the biggest factors in choosing which engines we want on our boat is the fuel consumption and then the range that goes along with that. I asked Seawin what the consumption was. They quoted that the Yanmar diesels use about 70% the amount of fuel that the outboards do. But I decided to ask some current 1160 owners for their real life experience and to see what they're getting in, in real life conditions. First off, I had no one say what their experience was with the Hondas. I think just because like what I said in the beginning, almost everyone who goes with outboards goes with the Yamahas. Out of the small but reliable sample size over a lot of their average, the, these guys had good information. It seemed like they really kept track of their consumption over time. It seemed like the average for the Yamahas were about one and a half to two gallons an hour at six and a half to seven knots. That's total for both engines combined. The diesel fuel consumption was about one gallon per hour or even less in, in some cases, 0.9 to one gallons per hour at a steady seven knots. And that's also for both engines combined. So definitely less fuel consumption overall for the diesels. So you burn less fuel, you have more fuel, and you can go faster. Yeah, <laughs> and you have more horsepower. So that combined with the fuel capacity, the Yamahas are gonna bring you about 250 nautical miles, whereas the Yamar diesels will bring you about 665 nautical miles. And that's a conservative estimate. <laughs> This category is really important to us, especially because we're going with a lithium house bank. Did you think Billy was gonna get anything besides lithium? <laughs> Outboards in general do not produce that much electrical power, especially compared to inboard diesels and their big alternators. So in our case, the Hondas only produce about 12 amps at 12 volts. The Yamahas produce about 16 amps at 12 volts, but the Yanmars produce 120 amps at 12 volts. That is quite a significant increase in electrical power, especially for the Yamars, considering the fact that we're going to be living aboard full time. It gets even more favorable for diesels because like I said before, we're going the lithium house bank. So with that lithium upgrade, the alternators on the diesel engines are automatically upgraded to 200 amp alternators at 12 volts. That's on each engine. So that's 2,400 watts from each engine, basically two generators. Not only do we have two diesel inboard engines that propel our boat, but we basically have two inboard diesel generators as well. Next topic, next topic, next topic. 
Weight, sailing efficiency, and drag. This is where the outboards win, hands down. The outboard options and their components weigh roughly 300 pounds lighter compared to the diesel options and their components. Now, if you take full fuel tanks into consideration, the outboard options with their components plus full fuel tanks weigh roughly almost 850 pounds lighter than the diesel options and their components with full fuel tanks. Which is a big difference. Another really nice thing about the outboards is when you're sailing, you can lift the engines out of the water, which creates a lot less drag. And if you are motoring and the engines are in the water and you happen to run over seaweed or garbage, with the outboards, you can just lift them up and take it off rather than having to like get a boat hook and get the seaweed off or jump in the water with a knife in unsafe conditions and try to get like a line or garbage off of the props. In addition to that, like with the outboards, if you're trying to get a piece of garbage or a seaweed weed off or whatever, you can lift one while the other is still propelling you underway, so you don't even have to stop. With the diesels, like if you're trying to get something off, you kind of got to stop the boat. Yanmar diesels and diesels in general are known to be longer lasting and more reliable in the long run, and that could also help with resale value in the future. However, if an engine did need to be replaced, it'd be far cheaper and easier to replace an outboard, and you can even do that with the boat in the water the whole time. Current 1160 owners say that accessibility to the outboards is easier for repairs and maintenance, and if you did happen to have to do a big repair on the outboards, you could do it while they're still in the water. However, you can still access anything on the Yamar diesels for repairs or maintenance, except the sail drive and anything to do with the prop. So anytime you wanna change the sail drive gear oil or the seal, you have to get the boat hauled. And same thing with like greasing the prop, obviously, if you have a feathering prop, for example. Which obviously you have to consider that work, but also the price of hauling the boat out is expensive. Next topic is noise. <laughs> The guys at SeaWin and many of the current 1160 owners that we've reached out to on Facebook have all said that the inboard diesels are much quieter, especially at the helm. We've also heard from some current SeaWin owners that under sail, even when the engines are all the way up, if it's rough and choppy conditions, they can still, waves can still slap under there and make some noise. So it hits the superstructure, the bracket that holds the outboards and the outboard legs and still will, yeah, make some noise. Additionally, while motoring with the outboards in rough or choppy conditions, it's possible that they can cavitate. So that's not good for the engines, it's louder, and it's not good for the efficiency or the speed of the boat through the water. Versus the inboard diesels, the props are under the bottom of the hull, so it'd be really hard for those props to cavitate. Each engine option has its own obvious sets of advantages and disadvantages. The most clear sets of advantages are efficiency, range, cost, weight, and electrical production. So it's been a super interesting conversation we've been having throughout the year, going back and forth, outboards versus inboards, pros and cons. And like I said before, we've been on the fence, like there's so much advantages to each engine option. So we ended up with, drum roll please diesel engines. So we hope that was informative for you guys, whether you're looking at getting a Seaman 1160 light or even any other catamaran that might have the options of inboard engines versus outboard engines. And even if you're not looking at that as a serious option for your own boat, at least I hope it was an interesting conversation. And we're really curious what you guys think about all of this. If you were in our position, what would you have picked? Obviously, the number one thing you have to consider is price and whatever is in your budget. The engine is such a high priority item, we're willing to go the extra cost there versus in other, other areas, other options on the boat. We're super curious what you guys think and what you would choose if you were in our situation. Definitely let us know in the comments below and just tell us why you would make that decision. And also let us know if you think we missed anything. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you next time. Stay tuned for our next five topics and go follow us along as we drive across country. See you later. See you guys. One thing we didn't touch on enough just because prices change so much, but the reason this is a question in general is because diesels cost significantly amount more, like over $15,000. So that's why this was even a question. If it wasn't a question, obviously we'd go for the diesels, but 
that much money is like a thing you have to consider. Is it worth it? And that's where this whole conversation came into play. Let's figure out what makes it worth it if it is. So <laughs> I hope that makes sense to you guys. <laughs> this will be a theme through like all our options videos. If we had all the money in the world, all the weight budget in the world, and thinking about future maintenance, repairs, cost, replacement for, for the components. Are you talking about my washing machine? Those are the three things we consider when we are picking these options. If those three things weren't in consideration, if we could have all the weight on the boat, if budget wasn't a factor, and if our ongoing repairs and maintenance costs and time weren't a factor, we'd be living the odds. We get every <laughs> single option on but the I option don't think sheet. We would. You say that, but I still don't think. Well, we what would. would stop us? Like it's weight, it's it's simplicity. budget. Simplicity. Well, simplicity goes along the lines of like future repairs and maintenance and stuff like that. If everything just worked a hundred percent of the time and you didn't have to do maintenance or repairs on them, that's simple, right? Yeah. So just so you guys know. All right, later. Next category. Billy told me I'd say this. Next category is fuel tank. <laughs> Just <laughs> focus on the words you have to say. And let's not. Let's not go over here. Yeah. Before that. But just stop. Say, stop moving. Electrical power. Ele electrical talk, production. Talk this. So this category is Restart. really... So Billy's trying to convince me that that will run our air conditioning for a little bit. <laughs> right? What air conditioning? <laughs> <laughs> are saying that the excess... <laughs> da, la, la, la. The outboard engines are really, really... Can you move over six inches? Thanks. Hmm. Hey, get away from that slot me. <laughs> Oh, and now she can play with her toy and make some noise. Hello, everybody. Today we're going to talk about options on Sea Wind. 